In this episode of the On That Net Show, we're going to learn about how we can build distributed applications using a really cool framework called Microsoft Orleans. Hi, everyone. My name is Celso Philip, and welcome to another episode of the On.NET Show. In this episode, we're going to learn a little bit about how we can build real applications using a framework called Microsoft Orleans. And so in this episode, I have my friend Ruben Bond here, who's going to talk to us a little bit about how Orleans works and show us some really cool demos about how we can start using it in our applications today. So Ruben, how are you doing, man? Hey, I'm really good. Thanks, Cecil. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. So if you don't mind, why don't we start off with you just introducing yourself and just letting everyone know who you are and what do you do? OK. Uh, I'm Ruben Bond. I'm a developer on the Orleans framework. I've been developing it for, I think, I think I've been involved for maybe five or six years now. Um, yeah. So I know Ru So I know Orleans has been around for a while. Right, it's, it's definitely mm -hmm. nothing new, and I know it's been used in tons of different types of applications within Microsoft. Can you tell us really quickly, like, what exactly is Orleans, and what are some of the problems that it aims to solve? So Orleans is a framework for building distributed applications, and so, you know, at Microsoft we have services which end up being very large, and they often need some kind of a way to coordinate with each other um, without putting too much pressure on, say, a database. Um, and without having a lot of concurrency issues like you get when you introduce a cache in a database and you know multiple front ends. And, and so Orleans helps with all of that kind of stuff. And it helps you build these applications that are fault tolerant, um, distributed, they scale very well. So you can scale them elastically up or down from let's say a single node is, is no problem or up to hundreds of nodes is also fine. Um, and ideally it helps users to build distributed applications in a way that's not rocket science. It, it should be relatively easy to understand these things and to get started and to go from that you know, beginning basics up to something that you would say is production worthy. Great, so I guess that means that as a developer, I can build relatively small applications with Orleans, but as mm -hmm. my need increases and I need to go from like one machine to maybe many or go from like a little bit of processing power to a lot, Right, I could be able to use Orleans and it'll be able to scale with me without me necessarily having to change too much of my code. Is that is that accurate? Definitely, that is, that's very accurate. So I'll show you an application today that I run on just a, a single dev box and it works fine on just my machine, but then we can also go into how, it, how would I actually deploy that to production and scale it out without changing any code. And so it can go from one to very many machines without uh, changing the code, just because of the way that you, you program it. Because of the programming model, it allows all of those kinds of things. Nice. Now, I've also heard that Orleans has been often referred to as a virtual actor framework. Mm -hmm. And so I know most of us are very familiar with object-oriented principles. We're familiar with those layered diagrams of, you know, I have my application layer and I have my data layer and my business logic layer and those types of things. Is the, does the programming model and the patterns that Orlean kind of naturally um, uh, suggests, I suppose, lends to you know developers that think that way? Or do I have to kind of think a little bit differently now about how I build my app when I use a framework like Orleans? You don't have to think too differently. If, if you think about your application as, let's say, a set of objects, you know, maybe you've got an object that represents a user profile or an object that represents a, a game session or a blog post or something, and these things talk to each other by making method calls on each other, really the main difference with Orleans is that instead of them making synchronous method calls, they're going to be making asynchronous method calls. And of course, in a regular application that, that wasn't using Orleans, if you've got databases involved, you're going to be using async anyway. And so even that's really not changing. Um, so still, you can use that same kind of modeling of object-oriented style um, and use Orleans with it. Nice. And I believe you had some slides, too, that we wanted to dive into. Oh, yeah. Um, so can you see my screen? Yes. OK, so we already talked about most of the basic introduction to you know, what Orleans is and what it helps you with. Um, and there are other videos where we can, you, know, you can get that sort of 101 introduction. But 
But basically, the high-level view is distributed applications. Uh, it helps you to build them using this concept called uh, distributed objects, or you could call them virtual actors. In Orleans, we call them grains. Um, and these grains, they have an identity. So that might be, you know, I mentioned blog posts. Maybe it's the ID of a blog post, um, or maybe it's the, the username for a user. Um, and they also have behavior, which is just a, because they're regular c -sharp classes, so you've got methods on them, and they have state. And the state can just be stored on the class, or it could be stored in a database. Um, and as we mentioned, it's built on .NET, and it's battle-tested. So what does a typical Orleans application look like? Well, here's what the basic architecture would be. You'd have some front ends, and they might be written, um, they might be HCP front ends, and they call into this Orleans cluster. As far as each of the front ends know, there's just some objects somewhere that, that I call into. And these uh, objects, which are grains, they call into storage. And, and it's essentially just separated in that way. Now, you can also move this Orleans bit into the same process as the front ends. And that's what we're going to do today. And one of the things that, that people always ask is, how do I take this and build a real world application using it? And so what I want to show you today is exactly that. So we can talk about this app. I made this application for Android a long time ago. I was trying to learn Chinese. Um, and so I wanted a, a dictionary that would help me really easily uh, read Chinese words. And so there's this Android app. It's basically a dictionary. You type in words in English or Chinese, and it'll give you the definition and, and a lookup. So it's like a bilingual dictionary. So what I want to do is take this and put it on the web so that I have some similar kind of web app that I can use. So diving straight into it, here's the application I want to show you. It's a .NET generic host. Um, we've added or, uh, ASP.NET Core as a front end so that we can have controllers like we typically would. Um, now down the bottom, you can see that we've got a, a web application written using Vue.js. We're not going to go into how exactly you write that. But then into the mix, we're throwing Orleans. And so these ASP.NET Core controllers are going to talk to Orleans grains. These grains are going to talk to each other. And then the data is going to get stored in table storage. But the real question people would normally have is, how do I take this idea of I want to build a dictionary app, and then or whatever app it is, and then turn it into grains? right? And so in this case, if you think about what a dictionary needs, the basic kinds of things are you've got definitions, so dictionary entries. And so we're going to have one dictionary entry grain per head word. So you might have a word like, you know, in Chinese, hello is ni hao. So maybe you'll have a ni hao dictionary entry grain, and that'll have the definition of that word. And then you'll have another grain to be able to search through the dictionary. So in this case, we'll have one search grain for each search query. So if I type in a word like hello or you know inauguration or whatever it happens to be, there'll be a grain that represents that query that gets spun up by a lean somewhere in the cluster. That'll do a search, it'll fan out to different dictionary entry grains that you know represent like maybe there's a few different ways you can say hello, for example, right? And then it'll collect those results, cache them for a little while, and return them back up to the uh, ASP.NET call controller. And then just to kind of show the kinds of things you can do using Orleans, let's say that we wanted to implement request throttling so that if a user just spam search, they, they're trying to you know, abuse the system somehow, we want to be able to limit that. And so we can take that user's IP and we can proxy any calls to the search grain or the dictionary entry grain through some other grain. So we'll say, let's create one grain per client IP Every call the user makes will go through that grain before it goes into the system. And then by doing that, we can, we can basically throttle those requests. And so it doesn't matter which front end they hit. It'll always be routed directly to this one grain that represents all of their calls. So, right, so, so really quickly, because so I just want to make sure that I'm understanding how mm -hmm. this is kind of structured. And hopefully everyone will understand this as well. But I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, so you have those three types of grains. And in my mm -hmm. head, as an ASP.NET developer, I look at those as three different types of services, right? Mm -hmm. So there's your dictionary one that you had, the dictionary entry one, there's a search one, and then there's the user agent one. So mm -hmm. in my head, I might have an iSearch service and an iUser service and a, you know, 
because we love interfaces, right? And <laughs> totally. each of those would implement some type of service. Now, the difference now, I'm looking at the dictionary entry one, and that one seems a little bit different because now you're talking about there's going to be one dictionary entry um, per grain, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm guessing the difference in the architecture is that instead of us thinking, hey, there's a dictionary service that I could just, I can hit that and it's probably caching stuff somewhere and I was just pulling entries out of cache. You're talking about creating, I'm guessing it's almost like a local cache so that each, each grain is in memory with its respective entry, but I have a way to, to hit those grains and pull out that necessary information that I want. Yep, exactly. So just like how you pull services out of an iService provider in ASP.NET, um, you'll do the similar kind of thing with Orleans, but instead of iService provider, to, to access a grain, you call iGrain factory. So I'm going to, I'll show you what the code looks like, actually. Yeah, let's um, do that. So if you want to, uh, I can show you what a, how it looks to get an actual grain. So let's start with, if we have an ASP.NET controller, so here we have that dictionary entry controller, um, we inject a grain factory into it. And then in order to get that service, I said that there's going to be one dictionary entry per, um, per term, so one grain per term. We just ask the grain factory, give me the grain that corresponds to that dictionary entry, key by ID, and then ask it for its definition. And so it'll just return that asynchronously. And like you said, it's going to be caching that locally. Now, probably before we go too much further into it, we should talk about how do we actually start building this application. And so we should start in program.cs and go down from there. How does that sound? Yeah, let's take a look. OK, so in, in .NET, using this .NET generic host, typically your application is going to look something like this. You're going to say, I want to create a new host builder, configure it using the command line arguments. And you might notice we don't have a public class program or you know main here. This is using the new C Sharp 9 top level statements. And so it just cleans up a little bit of that clutter. So with an Orleans application, you're going to say, I want to use Orleans. So you call use Orleans, you tell it that we're just doing local development today. So we don't need to add um, any other clustering, but we'll show you how, how that looks next time. And then the other thing I want to say is I want to be able to store my state somewhere. Uh, and in this case, I want to be able to store it in Azure uh, blob storage. And so I'm going to tell it that there's going to be this definition store for storing dictionary definitions. And here's how we connect to it. And because we're just doing local development today, we use local dev storage. So I'm running the emulator. But in a real situation, you'd probably pull in an environment variable and, and configure a connection string. And after telling it how to use Orleans, you just go about the regular ASP.NET configuration. So, you know, configure web defaults. And we run. So now we've got ASP.NET Core and Orleans running. Um, we need to go and add controllers and our grains to make it actually do something useful. And so I was showing you. I'm guessing Sorry, too, in this particular host setup, one of the benefits here is that you can kind of piggyback on some of the existing infrastructure that's there. So for yeah, instance, exactly. like the, you know, I configuration and, you know, um, mm -hmm. dependency injection, logging, all those, all those facilities that are kind of a part of that default host, that, that yeah. generic host, like you could use that in Orleans as well as your ASP.NET Core application, all within the same, you know, all within the same setup right there. Exactly. So you can use a options builder. It, it's probably hard to see on this uh, screen size, but you can use an options builder and pull things out of I configuration just as you normally would in, in any application. So it's very nice. It's very nicely integrated uh, into the regular ASP.NET Core application model. Nice. So looking at this entry controller, we already had a look at this before, but we showed that we're getting a grain um, by some ID. Well, let's look at what that grain actually looks like. So just down a few lines below, we use a regular uh, interface definition, but the only difference is that all of our interfaces are asynchronous because this grain might be hosted on some different machine. So it's not going to be local. Um, and we also tell it that I want a grain and I want to key it using a string. And of course, that string is just that ID that we provided before. 
And so what does an implementation of that actually look like? And so just below that, we have, here's a class that represents the grain. So it's a grain, it implements this interface. Um, we mentioned that we want to have some storage. And so we inject that using dependency injection. And if you're familiar to with uh, what Azure functions look like, you might be familiar with this kind of bindings approach um, where you inject something in the constructor and then you use an attribute to say, okay, what specifically am I looking for? And so in this case, we're getting that definitions storage that we configured back in program.cs. And we're saying that in this grain, we're going to call it uh, def for definitions. And, and here it is. And so then we store a state field on that class. And so then if you look at what's the implementation of, of get definitions, that call which gives us a dictionary definition, all it does is just return our state, our definition state, um, which is down here. So it just returns this definition that, that we wanted. Now there's some initialization here because in order to prime the state, we are actually using, reusing that um, Android applications SQLite database. And so if it doesn't have a state yet, when it starts up, it's gonna go and query SQLite, pull in the definition, and then it's gonna store it in the grains storage. But okay. it's, it's as simple as that. And so just by doing that, now we have the ability to go and get these things from somewhere. They're cached just naturally by, by virtue of the fact that the grains loaded that state, keeps it in memory, and just returns it as many times as you need. And so you make one database query instead of one every time. Like if everyone's looking up, you know, hello, ni hao, then maybe that's really popular. You don't want to have all of that pressure on the database. And so you can avoid that. Right. So there's two things that I wanted to point out to everyone. Sure thing. That make this a little bit different from just like an ICE service, right? Because right now we look at your application and everything's kind of in the same place, right? Like it's almost like it's in the same process. And so some people might be like, well, why do I need to use Orleans? Why don't I just use something like, uh, mm -hmm. again, some service class, right? But kind of like what you were alluding to a little bit earlier, one, like you set this up to use local clustering. So it's kind of looking within itself locally mm -hmm. for stuff. But if you wanted to, this grain that you created could be in a separate assembly, in a separate project maybe, living somewhere else. And your code in, in terms of activating it or interacting with it could be the same. So in terms of scaling, you do have the option of distributing these grains in different places, not just within the same process and not just within an ASP.NET process, and, and they could be able to pick each other up. Is that, exactly. Is that correct? So all of your front ends can talk to each other. All we need to do is change that clustering that we saw back here from use local host to, you know, you can use Azure storage as a, as a clustering plugin. Um, and that's all you need to do. Then you can scale out to, you know, a hundred machines if you want to, and they will still only make one request to the database for each grain and then cache that in memory as long as it's needed. So you don't have to change another line of code, just some configuration, that's all. Okay. And then the one other thing that I wanted to, to ask you about, so whenever you invoked the grain from the grain factory inside of the controller, I noticed mm -hmm. you had to give it an ID. So that's in right. my head, I guess that means that, you know, there are different instances of grains that get created for you. Because um, it doesn't look like you're creating them yourself, but I'm guessing Orleans yeah. manages the lifetime of those grains. Exactly. So, so go on. So I was going to ask, what do we have the the notion of stateless grains that I could just call and ask for stuff, or does everything need to have an identity? Yeah, definitely. You you, you can have stateless grains where essentially you get one instance every time you want it. You, they still have an identity. You can just give it a random idea if you want to, because sometimes you still want to have some semblance of coordination. So, uh, you know, let's say you, you did have a grain for throttling, but you wanted to make it stateless so that there would be one instance on every silo. Um, you can give it an identity to say, here's Q number X, for example, or, or client ID X. But yeah, you can have stateless grains just like you have stateful grains. Um, if we wanted to make this grain stateless, we could we could get rid of its persistent state here. Sure. We can add an attribute here to say it's a stateless worker. Um, and, and then by doing that, Orleans will create one on each silo that we have. And so if we wanted to have a local cache that's on every single instance, we can go and do it just by doing that. 
you know, we won't do it in this application though. Sure. I mean, one of the main reasons I was asking too is because mm -hmm. I was kind of wondering about load balancing. So now if I have multiple instances of the same grain or the same type of grain, but I don't really care about which instance I hit, can I just say, hey, give me a grain and run this thing without having to care about the identity of it? Yeah, d definitely. So you could have a local cache um, just by doing that, just by having that stateless grain. And you know, maybe you want to make a new um, caching grain, and then you'll always have one of those locally. All right, Ruben, this has been really good, man. Um, I know we're running close on time. So is there anything mm -hmm. else that you'd want to tell us about Orleans, you know, places that folks can go look at it, any links that you want to share or anything like that? So we, we have a, Orleans is up on GitHub. It's open source under the .NET Foundation. So you can come and visit us there. And if you have any issues or questions, you can create an issue or a pull request. Um, we also talk on Gitter. So you can jump in and ask any kinds of questions you want. And the sample that I'm showing you today is up online on GitHub as well, under my profile, under handbaobao-web. Also, we're on Twitter at MSFT Orleans, and my personal handle is Ruben Bond. Awesome. Well, hey, Ruben, thank you again so much for coming on the show. I definitely want to make sure I go and check out that app that you built, because that looks really interesting, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on the yeah, app can... store and stuff, so folks can just go ahead and download it, right? Yep, exactly. All right, Ruben, again, thank you again so much for being on the show. Um, and thank all of you for watching. This has been another episode of the On.NET Show. Where we learned about how we could build applications using Microsoft Orleans.